So now we can talk about the actual deploy, even though it's part of the same bullet, the same like third bullet. When okay. you want to deploy that, uh-huh. one of the things that are unique in the Tanzu platform is that we allow you to be abstracted on the way that you deploy your workload. Now, what is abstracted? Like, what does that mean? That means that if you want to deploy that workload on Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, on Kubernetes based on VMware Cloud Foundry, right? Uh, sorry, VMware Cloud Foundation. Like, if you want to run on, on VMware Cloud Foundation on-prem, on Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, you can use the deployment and what we call the application engine to then decide where the pl- workload placement of that workload will land. So let's think about a scenario. Let's say you have something that is based on um, data that you have on-prem and you want that piece of code, that application that we are pushing, you want that on-prem close to the data source without any like with secured environment, air-gapped, managed like in a, in a vault, right? To do that, you need to point that deployment into Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. But from the developer side, it doesn't need to do anything. The developer uh-huh. side will decide. The only thing the developer will decide is what are what is the space that he wants to deploy to. Now that space can be a secured space, and a secured mm-hmm. space can mean for the application engine that that the workload will land on Tanzu Kubernetes Grid on VMware Cloud foundation in an air-gapped environment. So when we deploy, we are not deploying into a specific cluster. We are not deploying into a specific server. We are deploying into a runtime, into our kind of workload placement engine that decides where the, the right location for that workload will be. And that's 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 a bit uh, that's unique. Like that's something that you don't see a lot. So we need to double click on that a bit to talk about like what are spaces and what is the application engine. Um, so three uh, A is our making the package. Right. Three B we deploy this package to a space. Right. And so for a developer, all the developer is concerned is like, which of the space it's supposed to go to. I don't care anything else about it. That's my job is to get it this far and no further. The only thing you need to do is to specify uh specify the space. So it will probably ask his platform engineer, which space should I use? The platform engineer will tell him, use the secured space. Let's let's call it secured space. And And that's it. From the developer side, that's it. By the way, that's that concept is also right for Cloud Foundry and for Kubernetes. Doesn't really matter. That's it. Um, and then the ops person configures where and what that space actually is. Right. Can I say what what that space actually is? Right. So let let's talk okay. about that ops person or the platform engineer. Uh huh. Okay. So the platform engineer knows this piece of application is a secured one, and he needs to think about all the different security aspects of that specific application. So from his end, he will get into the console, he will get into the management console, and he will create that secured space. He will need to choose what are the capabilities that are part of that space. Let's talk about examples, MTLS. I want everything okay. to be encrypted, right? How do mm-hmm. I make sure that everything is encrypted inside of my space? I'm just enabling MTLS. I need to have an ingress controller to expose that application in 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 certain way, right? So MTLS is one of them. Ingress is another. I need certificates because I need to encrypt, so I need certificates. So certificate uh-huh. or certificate manager is another uh, another option or another capability you will choose, right? Um, Mm -hmm. He knows that this developer will probably also going to need a data service or any other external service like cache layer or something. So we can enable in this space also the service toolkit, like the marketplace. He can create a marketplace for his developer to then decide which service he needs to bind into or which service he needs as part of his application. 
So the developer needs to know that cache is available. So that communication is happening between teams. So the developer, again, mm -hmm. it really depends on the use case, but let's say the developer uh -huh. pushed the app, right? That's it. He uh -huh. pushed the app into a space. Now the uh -huh. developer knows that he needs something. He needs an external service. He needs a Postgres or MySQL or Redis or whatever. It will probably reach out to the platform engineer and he will tell him, I need for this application, I need Postgres and MySQL. And uh -huh. the platform engineer, the only thing he needs to do is to enable those services in the space. Okay. And then the developer can decide if to consume them, how to consume them, and how to bind into them. But uh -huh. it's it's removing like all the complexity from the developer side of uh -huh. thinking about those different services or of thinking about credentials to connect to those services, right? All mm -hmm. of those things are being managed by the infrastructure as part of that space management. What if, like there are lots of different ingress controllers, for example, does Tanzu support any kind of ingress controller or are you but, uh, choosing an opinion? That's a good question. So as part of space, the Ingress controller will be an Istio Ingress controller and we are using Istio under the covers for everything uh -huh. inside of that. So for encryption, for MTLS, for Ingress, for Egress, that's Istio uh, as part of that, the service mesh. Okay. And, and well, Istio is great. I don't know why you'd want something else, but what if you did want something else? Could you switch it out? No, you're choosing that, an opinion in this. Yeah, case. that's that's cool. in this case also. I I haven't said that, but this at, at least for now, that's a SaaS service. When it will be self managed, it will be installable in the customer environment. But either mm -hmm. way, it's gonna be a control plane that is self managed, but the control plane is opinionated. So it's gonna be Istio either way. What you can choose and you can change is the uh -huh. global load balancer. So you have a global load balancer that diverts the traffic between the different clusters and basically uh -huh. stands in front of that world. Right yeah. now we have a support for Route 53 and for Avi Network, but we may add additional GSLBs in the future. So, and then I can, I mean, let me, I'll guess and you verify whether this is correct. When there is an opinion built into the platform, y'all aren't taking that opinion lately you you've done research and you've decided this is a good technology to yeah. use yeah i think yeah. it deserves like two minutes on opinions in general because i yeah, think opinions are important mm -hmm. um one of the things that was uh, against that people talked against cf cloud foundry is that it was too opinionated right like mm -hmm. it was a black box and you mm -hmm. can get that. Like people want to change things. They already have things. They want. They have knowledge about different tools, so they may want to switch and change. But then there's like a. It's a scale, right? Like there's a there's a pendulum, and you need to decide where you are because when you open everything up and everything is changeable and everything is like none of yeah. it, <laughs> you're you're getting. It's getting complicated. It's fast. a mess. Yes. Uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> So yeah. what, what we try to do is to be conscious of the fact that people will want to change things from one end, but mm -hmm. from the other end, we want to have enough opinions to make it easy and work, right? Mm -hmm. That's the balance that we want to achieve. Now, how do you see that? First of all, we've talked about like those different like uh, commands or steps, which is code build and deploy. Those are right for Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, right? It's not just for Kubernetes or just for Cloud Foundry. Now, mm -hmm. Cloud Foundry, as I said, is opinionated. You can't change anything. But if you do that on Kubernetes, you can run those different commands with your own pipeline. You can run that with Jenkins. You can run that with GitHub Action. You can run that with Azure DevOps. You don't have to use, like, it's not a black box, right? So we are allowing, we are allowing our customers to use their own tool sets in their own brownfield and change the command that they are running to, uh, to get those values on the current set of technologies that they are using and not replacing, not rip and replace everything, right? Okay. So that's the balance. From one hand, yeah. we are allowing customers to bring their own. We, will, uh -huh. we can integrate with the, the tools that they have. From the other end, inside the mechanism, like the the engine itself, let's say, let's talk about the app engine for a second. Uh -huh. when, Istio, when Istio is the service mesh networking fabric for app engine, that's something that you can't change. 
That's something when that you're saying app engine, you're defend, you're you're talking about this to put yes. this space. So okay. that space, that space is the the management a component or logical component of the application engine. Application engine is the engine itself that allows you to create that workload placement with rules and capabilities and everything else, and it will manage a space. If we mm-hmm. want to get a bit technical, eventually that space is an abstracted namespace. When we create okay. space, it will create namespaces according to the replicas that we will talk about. We will okay. probably going to do a demo later on in the series, but for now, it's going to create namespaces on each and every one of the clusters that we want to then deploy on. Okay. So back in this world that we talked about a long time ago now, yeah. one of the problems was each app team was using its own set of tools to do their container building, to do their CI, CD. Like they, would, they were each um, figuring it out on their own and then maybe even coming up with custom ways to integrate it with a, a production. Yeah, And so since you're coming into this world with Tanzu, uh, this is my understanding and I could be wrong. It seems like you're trying to make it so you the different app teams can have opinions at that level, at the build level. But then once you're getting more into infrastructure, that's when um, Tanzu tends to have more opinions. Is that correct? Well... If you ask me, and you know, my origins are from the security land, uh-huh. I, will, I will reduce the, like, I will make more opinions in the build as well. Because if you want to get consistent consistency, you will uh-huh. use those opinions, right? So, uh-huh. but overall, you're right. Like on the build okay. side, it's easier to open, like the way that you build and the way that you're interacting with everything else. On the infrastructure side, when you want to deploy, we will allow you more than just deploy to a Kubernetes cluster, right? We will allow uh-huh. you to get that abstraction layer that eventually we, we didn't get into the use cases, but we can think about an active, 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 passive situation, rolling upgrades and other like, you know, burst to the cloud kind of scenarios, a lot of different things where you have more value than just deploying on a Kubernetes cluster. To mm-hmm. get to that level of values on the runtime, we had to make sure that you have the right technologies and subsets of things that will abstract that um, and give you that value. And we've been saying from the beginning, like consistency is key. And with that consistency, it's easier to add governance. It's easier to add security. It's easier to add these advanced deployments uh, options that you're talking about. Right. Um, even like easier to onboard someone onto a team or have a, an individual switch between teams when it's all built on the same foundations. Exactly. Um, so I just, I get why opinions are important, but I also am curious about what knobs are adjustable and what which ones are time to use adding opinions. Again, there's a couple of knobs you can also switch on the infrastructure side, not the fundamental fabric of network. But you can create your own as well. Like you will be able to create your own capabilities uh, and you will be able to change different capabilities. Those are the things that you will be able to do. Um, again, it depends on the use case. I think that eventually what a customer wants, and you, we saw that, so we, we had a lot of success with Cloud Foundry, right? Cloud Foundry mm-hmm. is still like a huge application platform in the market. And mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons that Cloud Foundry is so successful is because the customer doesn't have to think about anything. Yeah. Developer, like the developer doesn't have to think about any anything. You've talked about like onboarding. Developer onboarding is something which is measurable. You can think about like measuring the time that you waste on developer onboarding. But there's another thing, which is the number of days to the first commit, that's onboarding, uh-huh. but also uh-huh. the number of like operational personas that you need per number of applications, like how many SREs you need or the platform engineers you need to manage thousands of applications in production. Yeah. And uh-huh. as much opinions that you have, like it's more opinions that you have will be more efficient also on the operational side because everything is being taken care of for the platform engineers as well. And everything is consistent. So one, one other thing that maybe we'll get into and maybe not, on the Cloud Foundry side, Everything is opinionated, including the VM that is running the container. 
So mm-hmm. the operating system of the of the VM, which is a stem cell in the Cloud Foundry, is fully opinionated and managed by VMware by Tanz. Mm-hmm. So think about mm-hmm. vulnerabilities in Linux or Windows or others. Right, we are taking care of those vulnerabilities. Yeah. Right, like it's it's secured by design. It's secured mm-hmm. on the OS level of the VM. And, and that's the way that we think about also the build service. So all mm-hmm. of the different dependencies that we choose to put as part of that build service, we are choosing them. We are choosing the dependency file. We choose which operating system, how much hardening will be like upon that OS, what are the dependencies that will be there. So all of those things, because they are opinionated, they are automatically more secured and more curated and, and also supported right, by us. I have I have a couple of questions. This one might be outside of the scope of this conversation, but mm-hmm. I imagine any customer, maybe they're trying to build their own platform and they're finding the overheads too high, but they've chosen opinions leading up until this point. And what if they, what they've already chosen? What if they have Linkerd and now Tanzu comes in with Istio? What? How does that problem get solved? So if the opinions I already have as an organization aren't the same ones as Tanzu. And that's gonna be the case, right? We we, yeah. we are not living like in a in in, in a new world that that doesn't <laughs> yeah. have it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's why one of the things that we want to present to the world is an application engine and not Istio. We are not uh-huh. like the fact that Istio is under the covers doesn't mean the customer need to needs to think about that Istio, right? Okay. And, and so the product or the service or the value that we bring without us obstruction, that's the application engine. The fact, uh-huh. the fact that I just told you it's Istio behind the scene doesn't mean anything uh-huh. for the customer. Because okay. when the customer will buy tons of platform and it will use App Engine, it will use App Engine. It doesn't okay. need to think about Istio, it doesn't need to upgrade okay. Istio, it doesn't need to, and, and that's that's crucial because service, me- service mesh in general is something that a lot of customer wants it's- to use, but afraid uh-huh. to use. Yeah, right? it has a lot of complexity, yeah. So we uh-huh. that that's another value. That's another strength that we bring. We allow you to get that service mesh and service mesh capabilities without you know the hustle of managing that kind of open okay. source service mesh. What if what if some of this stuff built in, what if it's heavier than what I need? What if I don't need MySQL? And it am I having to install, am I having to run heavier software than what I need if I don't need everything that's available no, in the states? That that's that's a great question. So I, I, I think I think the question is about the footprint that yes, we the footprint. Yeah. So so depends on the capabilities that you will choose, that's uh-huh. the footprint that you will have on the cluster. So okay. if you if you don't enable by the way, first of all, about MySQL, you won't uh-huh. have services on the cluster automatically. What you will have is access to the marketplace to then deploy the service, right? Beautiful. Like just, mm-hmm. just like we, you you won't be deploying MySQL as part of the capabilities. You will mm-hmm. get access to the marketplace. But e- either way, there's still a footprint because there's an operational like mm-hmm. aspect and there's networking aspect and there's sec- services and others. It depends on the capabilities. So you can limit that footprint and uh, depends on what, what capabilities you want for that space. Excellent. Thank you for letting me just dump a ton of questions about, I guess, the having opinions things just open a Pandora Pandora's box for me but, in but, terms of what that means exactly. But that's a yeah. good discussion. And I think that's a discussion mm-hmm. that everybody that, like, I don't know if you've been in KubeCon. I know you've been in KubeCon the last <laughs> time. But that was a conversation that a lot of people had about opinions, right? About platforms, uh-huh. about, like how do you abstract that complexity? I think that opinions eventually allows us as vendors to choose mm-hmm. for the customer and to give that, you know, abstraction layer on top of the complexity. Now, again, mm-hmm. let's go back to like one hour ago. The first uh-huh. thing we've said is that the mission in life of Tanzu is to accelerate the application path to production. And uh-huh. to do that, we have to simplify and abstract all the challenges that you have. And there's a lot of them. We've talked about it for infrastructure and developers. So uh-huh. if we want to do that, the only way we can do that in a reliable and sustainable way is if we will create a product that we uh-huh. can manage and we can decide what's in it. And we can also upgrade and update 
and have f- feature sets and you know backlogs and we can navigate with the industry to where it's going to be and not just throw on you 30 40 open source projects and integrate <laughs> now yeah. i'm saying that because we've we've been there like i, I yeah I, I, i'm i'm in this journey for the last eight years in in this uh-huh. specific like landscape we've we've been there everybody's been there and i think in in the last kubecon what i've heard is we had enough we need something <laughs> right it's too complicated yeah. We need yeah. something to simplify things. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not valuable. We are still using a lot of open source projects underneath our products. It's valuable uh-huh. and it's super, like, it brought so much innovation to the world, all the open source projects and the community, right? But eventually, when you get into an enterprise and that enterprise needs consistency and mm-hmm. it needs like that, you know, regulations and security and everything else and it needs operational efficiency that's where opinions comes into play yeah i think there are like 30 and just in the cncf alone which is already limiting the scope i think there are about 30 security projects and i think they cover like 10 different system design choices and that's just security and so trying to manage all of that for security and observability and like getting from the path from development to production and uh, everything possible. It's, it is wildly complex. Yes. Um, and that's what we want. To, that's exactly what we want to achieve. The simplification, the abstraction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So abstract and simplify. Okay. Yeah. Fourth bullet bind. Bind. Okay. So we have written our code we built it into an OCI image. We got that image into a package with configuration, and then we deployed it to a space, which a developer doesn't have to worry about what that is, and the ops person is making choices about what that is. Right. And now bind. And, and bind, as we said before, has to do with adding backing services to our application. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, an application is never just application, right? It's always going to have surrounding <laughs> services. Um, and what we what we allow our customers to do is, first of all, to to consume secured packages. So the acquisition of Bitnami back in the days was to create an option for our customers to have an application catalog which is secured and curated by design. So what we do is we have a bunch of open source tools and projects that we package curating and supporting and then exposing as part of a marketplace, right? So when you, if you will go, by the way, today to AWS, to the application catalog of AWS, and you check the publisher of Redis, you will see that the publisher is Bitnami. So it's basically VMware Tanzu, right? And so if you want to consume Redis, we will allow you to do that inside our platform, making sure that that package is secured and curated. But again, we need to divide the, the bind into developer and, 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 and operations, like in the platform engineer. Okay. From the developer side, the only thing the developer will have to do is to bind the application into the service. That's it. Okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't need to think about credentials, configurations, provisioning, security. It doesn't need to think about anything. He will see... Um, yeah. Yeah. It will see a list of services in the space. Uh-huh. It, will, it will see a list of services in the space and then it can decide to bind the application into it. That's it. Uh, dev sees available services in the space. That was about that was exactly what I was gonna ask is like how is it discoverable? Like how does the dev know what their options are? It's not even available. If the dev sees that in the space, that means that it's deployed in the space. So from developer side, when when a developer will do Tanzu service list, uh-huh. he will see data services or other external services that already is configured in the space and they are up and running for him to use. He won't see the marketplace because the marketplace is something that the platform engineer will see to then decide if he wants to deploy a service or if he wants to create an external service, right? Okay. On the developer side, again, we are trying to make it 
as simple as we can, right? For uh-huh. the developer, it will list the application, it will list the services, and it will bind the application into the service. That's it. It doesn't need to think okay. about anything else. And then the ops person is the one who sees the full catalog. If the developer wants something that's not available in the space, they ask the ops person to right. get that added to their system. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And if we haven't said that, it's supported on any cloud, right? Not just on VMware Cloud Foundation or anything. I- we didn't say it, but we've been careful not to be too Kubernetes specific. So, like, so, lots. right. So, on the Kubernetes yeah. side, on the Kubernetes side, it's supported on any Kubernetes. Mm-hmm. On the Cloud Foundry side, it's supported on Cloud Foundry. It depends on where do you deploy that. So, Cloud Foundry is a different architecture. You need to deploy mm-hmm. foundation, and you can deploy foundation on prem or off prem. It depends on you. But then it's again the Cloud Foundry is something that you deploy, um, as a foundation as a I don't want to call it the black box, but basically as a platform end to end, right? On the Kubernetes mm-hmm. side, you can decide. Uh, any conformant Kubernetes cluster will have those capabilities that we have just that we mentioned, including the build, deploy, and the bind. So these are discoverable through a catalog. Yes. And then you said they're secure. Like what are, tell me more about what makes them special getting them through the catalog as opposed to. So so the process of uh-huh. packaging those external services uh-huh. um, is secured by design. So we are taking the, the package, even if it's a package or the project code itself, and we are rebuilding it and why, when we are rebuilding it, we are scanning it for CVs, we are patching it, and we are repackaging it and exposing it. So basically think about a secure, just like we've, we've talked about the secure build, like the secure build service, we do that for all the open source services as well. And then we are publishing it into the catalog. Now, everything that we've just mentioned, we've talked about like, there's a lot of things that we've mentioned, which is the build, bind, and deploy, right? And we are talking a lot about like what's the the values and how both personas will look at, at, at things. We all of the things that we've just mentioned are eventually coming together in, into a specific, like into a consolidated UX and uh, that we have as part of our portfolio. So we will need to get also to how the developer looks at things and the platform engineer look, looks at things and, and interacts with the Tanzu portfolio. It's not just command line or API. It can also be the UI. And the reason I'm saying that right now is because in the UI, you will also have the full application catalog with all the packages, not just for space, because an application catalog in this aspect is also for VMs. So you can decide if you want to run some of the uh, services, not on Kubernetes, but on a Ah. VM. So services can be run just like somewhere totally separately from the application itself. Yeah, I, I think we can mention like a demo that that I did just because it's it's it represents like the use case that we are just that we mentioned, right? Um uh-huh. one one of the demos that I did for what you just draw on the board is I've connected a front-end application that is running on Kubernetes that has uh, Spring AI components. Uh, I I promise that I will say three times AI in this episode. So AI, <laughs> and otherwise, it's not a cutting edge tech resource. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's one of the things is basically a front end is connected into a back end service, and the back end services are databases that are running on VMs. Actually, they are running on Cloud Foundry VMs. So it doesn't really matter. The application catalog will allow you to create services either as part of the Kubernetes space or outside Mm -hmm. of the Kubernetes space. And then Mm -hmm. you can connect into uh, those different services as external services. Of course- Can I say services can run anywhere? Or on, what would be a good way to say that? Well, services can run anywhere on Kubernetes for sure, because as long as it's conform with Kubernetes, that will work. Um, mm-hmm. It will also run on VMs if it's 
VMware VMs as mm -hmm. part of OVF. Will it run on other VMs? Maybe, uh -huh. depending on like the package, right? So okay. depending on the service. So services can run on Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, or VMs, or VMware VMs? Cool. Cool. So um, then right now the, the interface can be API, CLI, or UI. UI. Yeah. And that's for, for either side, for ops and for dev. Yes. 